Hello students, once again, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will share a very important chapter of economics, which is cost. We should always remember cost is a producer related concept. These are the very famous producers and here production is taking place. So cost is a producer related concept. In this chapter, I will show you different types of cost, how cost varies with variations in output. And in this chapter, we will also analyze shape of cost curves. There are three types of cost. First is the implicit cost. We know there are some factors of production which a producer owns and uses it in the production process. Example, land or personal capital which a producer invests. So these are the implicit costs. See here, we can see a land. So he owns that land. The producer owns a land. So such cost needs to be estimated because if producer had rented out this land, he would have got rent, but he is using his land in the production process. So we can say implicit cost is the estimated value of inputs owned by the firm and used by it in its own production unit. Next is the explicit cost. Here money payments made to the owners of various factor services in the production of commodity is known as explicit cost. You can write it money payments made to the owners of various factor services in production of commodity is known as explicit cost. For example, the firm does payment to the owners of raw materials. So he gives wages to the laborers. He incurs expenditures on machines. So these are the explicit cost. Next, third is normal profit. Normal profit is the minimum payment which a producer must get in order to undertake risk of production. Because if the producer does not get minimum profit, he will not do production. So these are the three types of cost. Now coming to a very important concept, which is opportunity cost. Opportunity cost of any good is the next best alternative good that is given up to produce this Good. We will take a very simple example which may be make the concept more clear. Suppose a given amount of resources can produce resources can produce cloth, bread, and pencils. But for a producer, bread is the next best alternative to cloth. So opportunity cost of producing cloth will be the amount of bread which is given up to produce cloth and not the number of pencils sacrificed because bread is the next best alternative to produce cloth. So the amount of bread which is sacrificed, which is given up to produce cloth, that is the opportunity cost of producing cloth. So opportunity cost of any good is the next best alternative good that is given up to produce this good. So when you are writing the definition, don't forget to write next best. This term is very important. Next best. Now we come to fixed cost. Fixed cost is that cost which is incurred on fixed factors. Here are some of the examples. What are the fixed factors? For example, permanent stuff. Even if output is zero, the firm has to give the salary to the permanent stuff. Rent of factory building. Even if the production has not started, the firm has to pay the rent, property tax, then expenses for maintenance of building. These are the fixed cost examples. Some of the examples. Now we come to variable cost. Variable cost is that cost which is incurred on variable factors. For example, raw materials. If a firm buys raw materials, he has to incur an expenditure. So this is a variable cost. Because the more he produces, the more he buys raw materials. It depends on the output level. So it is variable depending on the output level produced. Next, wages and salaries paid to the staffs. Because more the number of laborers employed, he has to pay more wages and salaries. So variable cost is related to the amount of production. Next is electricity bill. Electricity expenses is also a variable cost. Now we come to total cost. 
total cost refers to total obligations incurred by the firm in producing any given quantitative output. So it is a cost incurred on fixed and variable inputs for producing a given quantity of input. So the firm has fixed and variable inputs. So the total cost is the sum total of total fixed cost and total variable cost. Total cost is denoted as TC. Total fixed cost is TFC and total variable cost is TVC. So TC is equals to TFC plus TVC. TVC is fixed and TC changes because of change in TVC. We should keep this thing in mind. Total cost always changes because of change in TVC. That is total variable cost because total fixed cost is fixed. Now we come to the table. First, in the first column, we have output or units produced 0 to 6. Then we have the TFC, which is constant at 60 at all levels of output. Even if output is 0, TFC is positive. You should keep this thing in mind. Here we have the TVC. For 0 level of output, TVC is 0. And TC is the summation of TFC and TVC. So 60 plus 0 is 60. Now we can see here at this in TVC column, here TVC is increasing at an increasing rate. How do we know increasing rate? Initially 40 is the difference. 40 minus 0 is 40. Then 76 minus 40 is 36. Then here we have 102 minus 76 is 26. So TVC is increasing, 40, 76, 102, it is increasing. But the rate of increasing, decreasing, because 40, initially it was 40, then it is 36, then it is 26. Up to three units, TVC is increasing at a decreasing rate. After three units, TVC is increasing, definitely. Here it is increasing, 102 to 132, 130 to 170, it is increasing. But is it is increasing at a increasing rate because 132 minus 102 30 then 170 minus 32 is how much 38 so initially it was 30 then the gap is 38 so tvc is increasing at an increasing rate now so and we come to the tc column which is the summation of tfc and tvc so 60 plus 0 is 60 60 plus 40 is 100 60 plus 76 is 136, 60 plus 102 is 162. Similarly, 60 plus 132 is 192. 60 plus 170 is 230. 60 plus triple two equals to 282. So we can say TC is changing because of changing TVC. Here, similarly, TC is increasing at a decreasing rate initially. Then it increases at an increasing rate. I will show you why. So TVC and TC, they both increase at a decreasing rate initially, and then they increase at an increasing rate. Now we come to the total fixed cost curve. So we measure output on the horizontal axis and TFC on the vertical axis. So TFC curve is a straight line parallel to the horizontal axis. So this is 60, suppose TFC is 60 in our table. So TFC curve is a straight line parallel to the horizontal axis because at any level of output, suppose at this level of output, TFC is 60. We can take this level of output. TFC is 60. It is the same. So it is a straight line parallel to the horizontal axis, indicating the same amount of fixed cost at every level of output. At zero level of output, the firm has to bear the fixed cost. So at zero level of output, that is at zero level of output, this the TFC curve is positive, TFC is positive. Because I've said you, even the firm does not start its production process, it has to be a total fixed cost. That's why at zero level of output, total fixed cost is positive. Now we come to the TVC curve. Here we have the TVC and output. I've already explained you TVC. Initially it increases, First, we will let us see this one by one. TVC is zero at zero level of output. Because we know when output is zero, TVC is zero. The firm does not have to incur any variable cost. 
So it will start from the origin. Now TVC increases at a decreasing rate up to three units. As I've said you, this gap is decreasing 40, 36. So the gap is decreasing. So TVC is concave downward. Then from four units, TVC is increasing at an increasing rate. So TVC is concave upward. So initially you start from the origin by measuring TVC on the vertical axis and output on the horizontal axis. You will start from the origin. You will draw like this. That is TVC is concave downward, then TVC is concave upward. And you will always level it here, TVC. Don't forget to level it. Now TVC's shape is because of law of variable proportions. I have already explained you the law in the chapter production. Let me say again. So TVC increases at a decreasing rate due to increasing returns to variable inputs. When the variable inputs are utilized fully, arising from full day utilization of fixed factors. So there's an increasing returns to variable inputs and there's a greater specialization as well. And it increases at a increasing rate due to diminishing returns to variable inputs. When there's a diminishing returns to variable inputs, what happens? Cost increases at an increasing rate. So TVC increases at an increasing rate. Initially, there's an increasing returns to variable inputs. So TVC increases at a decreasing rate. Then there, there's a diminishing returns to variable inputs. What happens then? TVC increases at an increasing rate. Now we come to total cost curve. Here we see know that TC is the summation of TVC and TFC. So first we draw the TFC curve and TVC, right? Now TC curve will start from this point, point M. Why? Because at zero level of output we know TC is equals to TFC because TVC is zero. So we will start from TFC. That is at point M, TFC is positive at 60. So we start from this point and it will follow the shape of TVC because TC follows the same rule, law of variable proportions. Initially, total cost increases at a decreasing rate and then total cost increases at an increasing rate. So here, what is written? TC starts from M because at zero level of output, TC is equals to TFC. So TC is equals to TFC. Vertical distance between TC and TVC equals TFC. We know TC minus TVC is what? TFC. And it will remain the same at all levels of output, right? Because TFC is same at all levels of output. So you should, when you're drawing it, make sure that this distance is the same. You should not draw it like this. No, this distance should always be the same. You draw it in such a way that this distance is always the same. Like TVC curve, TC increases at a decreasing rate first, and then it increases at an increasing rate. So it's because of the law of variable proportion. So when you will draw this curve, make sure, first you will draw, first you will level it, cost on the vertical axis, output on the horizontal axis. Then draw the TFC curve, and then TVC curve. Then you start TC, that is total cost from point M, or from TFC, then you draw it in such a way that the vertical distance between these two, TC and TVC, is the same. Because if it should not be like that, the distance is not same. Because we know TFC is the same at all levels of output. So this vertical distance between TC and TVC should always be the same. Thank you for watching my video. If you liked my video, do subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon. Bye-bye. Have a great time. I will soon upload cost part two. Thank you.